No one will ever forget what the tornadoes of Hurricane Milton did to South Florida. Lives are taken, homes, businesses destroyed by the twisters Milton spawned here hours before landfall. Now, let's go on the record to talk about helping storm victims recover and rebuild. From WPBF 25, this is On the Record with Todd McDermott. Milton hit us October 9th, roaring ashore on Siesta Key to the west as a Category 3 hurricane. Before that, unprecedented and deadly tornadoes here. Add to all of that catastrophic flooding. In the next half hour, we meet people from relief organizations and local leadership working tirelessly to restore and rebuild what was lost. It is going to be a long process. We begin this morning with Renee Bafalas with FEMA and Rick Morales with the Small Business Administration. Thank you both first for being here. Of course. And thank you for the work you're doing. I know it's so important to so many families in our community right now. Renee, I'll start with you. I know this is going to be an ongoing process. Tell people how you begin tackling this more than a week since landfall. Well, what we really want to stress to folks is to contact their insurance company if they had insurance. That's the first step in every process. The second step is to contact FEMA and register with us. You can do that in several different ways. You can call our 1-800-621-3362 number. You can go online to disasterassistance.gov. We also have a FEMA app. We also have disaster recovery centers that are going to be opening in the coming days within all the counties that have been affected by the tornadoes. Um, and we also have disaster survivor assistance teams that are going door to door throughout the communities. I know you've been with FEMA a while. Can you reflect a little bit on the scope of this disaster right here in our community where, where you live and work? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We, we don't normally have uh, F3s, tornadoes in Florida. So to see the devastation in this community is, is, is pretty, pretty unusual. So uh, it, we don't normally compare disasters right. because every disaster is different and everybody that's affected is affected in a different way. So, um, but for, for our community alone, it's been pretty devastating. It sure has. And let's address that. Rick, let's talk about money for business owners specifically, for those who've lost something or perhaps everything to the storm. Um, and what I would like first is to talk about who qualifies. Well, uh, we don't only assist uh, businesses, but also homeowners, renters, and nonprofits. And then that's very important to know that we are here to help. Um, we have uh, so uh, much benefits, like no fees to apply. And at the end of the day, they don't have to accept uh, our loan. And no interest rates, no, no fees to apply. And um, they are long-term um, disaster loans. So that means that if you choose, let's say, 30 years, you can have low monthly payments. So that's how you can get back in your feet. And you have uh, also um, the one year deferment uh, with 0% interest rates. So no nothing for that year. So that's another way of how the people can uh, recover quicker. Are you finding that business owners know about SBA loans after a disaster like this? Do they need to be informed? I'm hoping some are able to watch us this morning to talk about this. but. Are, is it hard to get the word out on SBA loans in a situation like this? No, um, the reality, um, it has been very easy because we have uh, very good relationships uh, with county government, local government, with the federal government, like uh, with our colleagues uh, of FEMA. We always uh, work together and we do so many uh, different interviews and county, county commission meetings, city council meetings, and all kinds of activities and events to share the information with the survivors. So they are uh, very well informed and they are um, already um, applying with us. So many uh, applications approved already and we are doing uh, really great. Um, can you give me an idea of the dollar amounts we're talking about here? I think a lot of people would like to know what SBA can do for somebody in this position. Well, uh, we have already approved millions. Um, the limits um, for physical damages uh, for uh, businesses is up to two million. Um, for homeowners is uh, up to uh, 500,000. Uh, All right, Renee, let's talk more about money from FEMA. And let me, let me can sure. I stop you for one second? Yep. Because there's a misconception of how FEMA works. They, people think we're going to come in and we're going to get them whole again. Our assistance is a step or a hand up. What's that first step for FEMA? The, what, what do you mean? The first cash payment people make. I think there's some confusion about what FEMA there can is. do. There is. There's a new program, and it's called Serious Needs Assistance. And that's when you come to us and you tell us what your situation is. And we want you to be very forthcoming with your information. If you are 
in a situation where maybe you're working paycheck to paycheck and your bank account is getting really low and you've got a child to feed, you've got a diapers to buy, you've got medical supplies you need. We need to know all of that because you might qualify for that program. And that's an immediate response to the disaster. That'll mm -hmm. help you within the first few days to get through those, that period. It also will provide you with some sort of housing assistance. Now, in addition to that, we have our individual assistance program. That's broken into two areas. One is housing assistance, if you're in need of housing. The other is other needs assistance. Let's talk about housing first, because okay. that's for people who've lost their homes or their home is unlivable, that is a very immediate need. What Absolutely. Can, what can be done? What can FEMA provide? We can provide you with rental assistance, and of course, lots of friends and family take people in as well. So we have, a, we have a system set up. So if we know that you're in a situation like that, we can provide that to you. Additionally, there's other needs assistance. And that refers to things that are not covered by your insurance or if you're, if you're underinsured or you're uninsured. Say you need um, to just do initial repairs to get yourself into a safe and secure environment back in your home. We might be able to help you in that regard. I want to jump in here because okay. I'm running out of time. I want to know about Operation Blue Roof, what it is, what it does. Operation Blue Roof is done by the Army Corps of Engineers. It's been approved for the state. And what they will do is they will look at your property to make sure that your roof is the type of roof that they can put the roof on. And they will put a blue tarp on your roof for you. All right. And again, there are a couple of ways. I have 30 more seconds contacting you and contacting the SBA very quickly if you could, the different options people have, because I know, as you've actually mentioned on our air, people don't have the time necessarily to fill out a lot of forms at this point in their lives after what's happened. Right, that's true. And so we, again, we tell people, please call our 1-800-621-3362 number, go online to disasterassistance.gov. And as I said, we have disaster survivors assistance teams that are in the field going door to door, but we will be opening disaster recovery centers in the area in the coming days. Please come into those centers. They're really beneficial to the, to the survivors. They give them someone to talk to, someone to advocate for them. All right, Renee Rick. No one will ever forget what the tornadoes of Hurricane Milton did to South Florida. Lives were taken, homes, businesses destroyed by the twisters Milton spawned here hours before landfall. Now, let's go on the record to talk about helping storm victims recover and rebuild. From WPBF 25, this is On the Record with Todd McDermott. Milton hit us October 9th, roaring ashore on Siesta Key to the west as a category three hurricane. Before that, unprecedented and deadly tornadoes here. Add to all of that catastrophic flooding. In the next half hour, we meet people from relief organizations and local leadership working tirelessly to restore and rebuild what was lost. It is going to be a long process. We begin this morning with Renee Bufalis with FEMA and Rick Morales with the Small Business Administration. Thank you both first for being here. Of course. And thank you for the work you're doing. I know it's so important to so many families in our community right now. Renee, I'll start with you. I know this is going to be an ongoing process. Tell people how you begin tackling this more than a week since landfall. Well, what we really want to stress to folks is to 
contact their insurance company if they had insurance. That's the first step in every process. The second step is to contact FEMA and register with us. You can do that in several different ways. You can call our 1-800-621-3362 number. You can go online to disasterassistance.gov. We also have a FEMA app. We also have disaster recovery centers that are going to be opening in the coming days within all the counties that have been affected by the tornadoes. Um, and we also have disaster survivor assistance teams that are going door to door throughout the communities. I know you've been with FEMA a while. Can you reflect a little bit on the scope of this disaster right here in our community where, where you live and work? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We, we don't normally have uh, F3s, tornadoes in Florida. So to see the devastation in this community is, is, is pretty, pretty unusual. So uh, it, we don't normally compare disasters right. because every disaster is different and everybody that's affected is affected in a different way. So, um, but for, for our community alone, it's been pretty devastating. It sure has. And let's address that. Rick, let's talk about money for business owners specifically, for those who've lost something or perhaps everything to the storm. Um, and what I would like first is to talk about who qualifies. Well, uh, we don't only assist uh, businesses, but also homeowners, renters, and nonprofits. And then that's very important to know that we are here to help. Um, we have uh, so uh, much benefits, like no fees to apply. And at the end of the day, they don't have to accept uh, our loan. And no interest rates, no, no fees to apply. And um, they are long-term um, disaster loans. So that means that if you choose, let's say, 30 years, you can have low monthly payments. So that's how you can get back in your feet. And you have uh, also um, the one year deferment uh, with 0% interest rates. So no nothing for that year. So that's another way of how the people can uh, recover quicker. Are you finding that business owners know about SBA loans after a disaster like this? Do they need to be informed? I'm hoping some are able to watch us this morning to talk about this. but. Are, is it hard to get the word out on SBA loans in a situation like this? No, um, the reality, um, it has been very easy because we have uh, very good relationships uh, with county government, local government, with the federal government, like uh, with our colleagues uh, of FEMA. We always uh, work together and we do so many uh, different interviews and county, county commission meetings, city council meetings, and all kinds of activities and events to share the information with the survivors. So they are uh, very well informed and they are um, already um, applying with us. So many uh, applications approved already and we are doing uh, really great. Um, can you give me an idea of the dollar amounts we're talking about here? I think a lot of people would like to know what SBA can do for somebody in this position. Well, uh, we have already approved millions. Um, the limits um, for physical damages uh, for uh, businesses is up to two million. Um, for homeowners is uh, up to uh, five hundred thousand. Uh, All right, Renee, let's talk more about money from FEMA. And let me let me can sure. I stop you for one second yep. because there's a misconception of how FEMA works. They, people think we're going to come in and we're going to get them whole again. Our assistance is a step or a hand up. What's that first step for FEMA? The, what, what do you mean? The first cash payment people make. I think there's some confusion about what FEMA there can is. do. There is. There's a new program, and it's called Serious Needs Assistance. And that's when you come to us and you tell us what your situation is. And we want you to be very forthcoming with your information. If you are in a situation where maybe you're working paycheck to paycheck and your bank account is getting really low and you've got a child to feed, you've got diapers to buy, you've got medical supplies you need. We need to know all of that because you might qualify for that program. And that's an immediate response to the disaster. Mm -hmm. That'll help you within the first few days to get through those, that period. It also will provide you with some sort of housing assistance. Now, in addition to that, we have our individual assistance program. That's broken into two areas. One is housing assistance, if you're in need of housing. The other is other needs assistance. Let's talk about housing first, because okay. that's for people who've lost their homes or their home is unlivable, that is a very immediate need. What can, Absolutely. What can be done? What can FEMA provide? We can provide you with rental assistance, and of course, lots of friends and family take people in as well. So we have a we have a system set up. So if we know that you're in a situation like that, we can provide that to you. Additionally, there's other needs assistance, and that refers to things that are not covered by your insurance, or if you're if you're underinsured or you're uninsured. Say you need um, 
to just do initial repairs to get yourself into a safe and secure environment back in your home, we might be able to help you in that regard. I want to jump in here because okay. I'm running out of time. I want to know about Operation Blue Roof, what it is, what it does. Operation Blue Roof is done by the Army Corps of Engineers. It's been approved for the state and what they will do is they will look at your property to make sure that your roof is the type of roof that they can put the roof on and they will put a blue tarp on your roof for you. All right, and again, there are a couple of ways. I have 30 more seconds contacting you and contacting the SBA. Very quickly, if you could, the different options people have, because I know, as you've actually mentioned on our air, people don't have the time necessarily to fill out a lot of forms at this point in their lives after what's happened. Right, that's true. And so we, again, we tell people, please call our 1-800-621-3362 number, go online to disasterassistance.gov. And as I said, we have disaster survivors assistance teams that are in the field going door to door, but we will be opening disaster recovery centers in the area in the coming days. Please come into those centers. They're really beneficial to the, to the survivors. They give them someone to talk to, someone to advocate for them. All right, Renee, Rick, thank you so much. And thank you for the work of FEMA and the SBA. I'm sure we'll be talking to you in the weeks and the months to come. I'm sure you will. Appreciate all that you are doing. Thank you. Well, coming up, we're going to talk with more law enforcement when it comes to helping people recover. We'll talk to the St. Lucie County Sheriff when On the Record continues. You're watching On the Record on WPBF 25. Welcome back. Joining me now is St. Lucie County Sheriff Keith Pearson, the top law enforcement officer in the local county that saw not only widespread tornado damage and destruction, but as we know, the heartbreaking loss of life in those tornadoes. Sheriff, first, how are your people doing? How are you doing? I know it's been a difficult first week for many people in the community, but what about your staff? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for covering this and, and shining a light on you know the tragedy uh, that struck us here in St. Lucie County. The men and women of the Sheriff's Office, the National Guard, all the other agencies that sent hundreds of law enforcement officers here to our community to help save lives are uh, are doing good. You know, we're just so happy that we're in a position to be able to help people. Sheriff, let me ask you something. I know you've seen a lot in your career. It's been a long career. Have you ever dealt with anything quite like what we saw on October 9th? No, oh, I've never, never in my life. And having a uh, front seat to it, you know, it first striking right in our backyard, us being 100 yards away from it, it's starting at the sheriff's office, taking down our 27,000 square foot facility, and then it just moving to the north, being out there, listening to the deputies on the radio, the panic in their voice when they're calling out multiple locations, saying there's a tornado here, there's a tornado here, um, and just knowing that anything in the path of these devastating tornadoes didn't really stand much of a chance. I want to talk about the families in a moment, but before we leave what happened to the sheriff's office itself, just to remind people, I remember you live on our air after that tornado hit that building. Uh, explain to people again what the building, I know that it was iron reinforced and you lost a lot of equipment that obviously the county will have to replace. So it's a 27,000 square foot red iron structure. So this isn't like a, a Ted shed. This is a building that's designed to protect our equipment during a hurricane but there's nothing that could stop these tornadoes that came through. We had our equipment stored underneath this uh, facility to protect it, you know, from the hurricane winds, our high water rescue vehicles, our brand new patrol cars that we just got in. So when this tornado came through, I'm, we're, we're, no, we're not immune to it like anybody else. We got the alerts on our phone saying seek shelter. There's a tornado a warning, a tornado in your area, but nobody thinks it could happen to you, but it happened to us right in our backyard. And it happened to many of ours in our community. Well, let's talk about the community and the, the loss of life, because I know that it had an impact on everybody in, in this area of the country, our viewing area, also on your staff. What was it like for deputies dealing with what they saw and had to, um, had to help out during the storm on the 9th? You know, um, there's so many stories and so many different incidents that our deputies did that they stepped up to the plate, whether it's driving over hot power lines, whether it's using their vehicles to push debris out of the way, whether it's climbing through the rubble and pulling people out of it, you know, where, where that was once a home. You know, it's taking a toll on them. We have counselors. We want to make sure that that 
we're mentally taking care of our police officers and first responders that that were involved with this. But again, it, this is just we're still in, in the mix of it right now. I'm, I'm from you at Spanish Lakes, pretty much the ground zero of St. Lucie County, where we have uh, it's set up to provide uh, help and resources to, to the citizens here. And that, let me get to that more on that, because what is the interaction been like? What is the action even right now between your deputies and those folks who have lost so much? It's got to be emotional. It's got to be personal. And I know they're doing everything they can for them. You know, right now, uh, since we're today would be one week out and almost one week to the hour. Um, right now, the show of support from those residents who were affected by this is just extremely emotional. You know, we're seeing them come up. They're they're embracing our deputies. They're giving them hugs. They're telling them, you know, thank you for being here right after the storm and for not leaving and being here the entire time. We haven't left. We have a command center set up here and we're hand delivering food. We're going door to door, checking on people and we're making sure that security is our top priority. We've had not one incident of looters. That is a really great thing to hear, considering the possibilities, but also that outreach by your deputies at this time is so important. Anything else you want people to know in the community about how the sheriff's office is helping, what resources are available? Absolutely. I think first and foremost, deputies are people just like everybody else. Not only did our deputies step up to the plate, not only did our firefighters step up to the plate, we have hundreds of linemen. We know the, the county worker that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, either picking up garbage with a grapple truck or driving a, a, a large piece of heavy equipment to, to clear a roadway. They were out here with us as well. So I don't want the public, I don't want anyone to uh, not miss out on any credit. Those that aren't necessarily first responders definitely stepped up to the plate. Uh, this is a community effort. Hundreds and hundreds of volunteers have come forward. You know, Mother Nature showed us the worst side of her. But St. Lucie County and its residents has showed a whole different side of humanity that's just amazing and uh we can't be more grateful to live in the greatest state and the greatest county. Well, congratulations to your deputies. We thank you for their work and congratulations to the larger St. Lucie County community for coming together this time. Sheriff Keith Pearson, thanks for joining us for On the Record. Appreciate it. Thank you for covering this. Well, next we talk with the American Red Cross about their work in our hardest hit neighborhoods. Joining me now is Greg Goodman, Senior Regional Philanthropy Officer for South Florida American Red Cross. Greg, thank you for coming here. Thank, thank you, you for what the Red Cross is doing. First, let's give people an overview of what the American Red Cross has been doing since Milton's tornadoes hit our area. Okay, well, as you remember, uh, uh, Hurricane Milton came, out, came on the heels of Hurricane Helene. Helene. Right. We've been, we, we were positioned for Hurricane Helene, what became Hurricane Helene, for, for weeks. Uh, and that starts with the positioning of our, of our people, the teams, the volunteers, uh, going to our warehouses, getting all the supplies and things that we need to set up our shelters and, and supplies and things, things of that nature, and then responding right. uh, to what for Helene became five states, I mean, from Florida to Virginia, with a lot of real damage in, in, uh, in the western part of North Carolina. And then, of course, Hurricane Milton came. What's the pivot like to go from <laughs> one terrible disaster to another just almost instantly? It's got to be difficult for, for volunteers, for the staging, et cetera. It has to be a challenge. Well, you know, it's what we do. Yeah. That is what we do. What we do. And the truth is, is that in these days, we're responding to more, uh, more frequent, more intensive, and concurrent disasters. That's what we do. That's our job. You know, American Red Cross on a national level responds to maybe 65,000 disasters per year. And that includes home fires, too. That's amazing. That's so, a big number. Isn't it? Yeah. And uh, that's like a disaster every eight seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. That's our job. That's the job that we do. And, and you know, 90% uh, of our workforce is volunteers. And, and we hold them in the highest regard. And they're trained to do what they need to do. They're trained to respond. They're trained to uh, understand what to do in shelters. They're trained to be handle inquiries from worried family members throughout the country trying to find out where their missing loved ones are. And, and a lot of times, uh, your Red Cross volunteers on the ground are, are some of the first people that victims of disasters see. I'm sure they have all kinds of questions, and I know there's relief when you see the Red Cross is there. Tell me what your folks do on the ground 
right away when they first are on a scene like the one we saw? Uh, on well, the obviously, well, obviously we have to assess the damage and we have to get through the floods and, and all, of the de all of the debris to get to our, our, the victims of, of all of these disasters. And then we come out, we're all prepared, we're ready to go, we're ready to bring uh, uh, victims from evacuation to shelter, safe shelter. We're ready to provide them the, with the food that they need, the, the supplies, that, the comfort kits that they need, uh, access through our partners and us to emotional support and medical services. Some people lose their prescriptions. We have to find their prescriptions. We have to do that piece too. And a lot of it is financial, uh, financial help too. And you know, thank God for our um, for our donors, who are very special people and compassionate, and they provide us the 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 money that we need to be able to handle these multi-million dollar disasters on a regular basis. I think a lot of times we see a, a Red Cross team out in the red jackets. People know who they are, yep. but I think sometimes we may lose sight of how many people it takes to respond to something like this. You mentioned Helene, five states. Look, the widespread damage in this state on our side of the state and obviously on the landfall side as well. What type of deployment are we talking about in terms of numbers of people that responded? Well, I'll tell you, for Hurricane Helene, we had 2,000, 2000 volunteers and staff members, volunteers deployed to handle the five states. And then many of them transitioned after that when Hurricane Helene hit, uh, Hurricane Milton hit, I'm sorry. Uh, so we have about 1,500 people just dealing with Hurricane Milton at this point. And I like to, I like, you mentioned the training. <clears throat> I like to remind people who these folks are. You said 90% volunteers. Who are they? Who are the folks who are out there helping victims of disasters right in their own neighborhoods when this happens? They're everybody. They're retirees. They're people that take time out of work. They're young people. They're from, from all, they're diverse populations. That's, what they, that's where we get them from. It's a selfless commitment of these people it's to hard do work. this kind of work. It is a self-commitment. It's rewarding for people because, you know, these are sad situations, but this is rewarding for them. This is what they do, and it's hard work. You know, I was deployed uh, a, number, uh, to the, uh, a few years ago to Nashville after the tornadoes. My deployment was two weeks, two weeks, six days a week, 14-hour days, one day off. And I, I remember some of my friends said, did you enjoy Nashville? Did you get to see all the sights of Nashville? No. No. I work 14-hour days with one day off. It's hard work, Sometimes, and this is what we do. Something you can go back, and we should add that uh, through the Red Cross and our partnership with you on our Day of Giving, we raised in excess of $40,000, tremendous outpouring from our large viewer family here, and we just want to express our appreciation for everything the Red Cross does. We're appreciative to you for helping us do this telethon. This is important to us. We are it so is, grateful to our donors and to you. It is, it is our pleasure. Thanks thank again you so for everything much. you do. Well, thank you so much. Greg Goodman from the American Red Cross. Thanks for going on the record, and we'll be right back. Thank you, as always, for making this part of your morning today. As always, we want you to be part of our discussion each and every Sunday right here at 10 a.m. every week. Until then, you can watch this morning's On the Record program and every episode on our website. That's WPBF.com and on our free WPBF 25 News app. Matter of fact, with Soda O'Brien is next. We hope you have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you again next Sunday morning at 10.